I walked down that septic hill. I was on the hill. The grass was a little shorter. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll get less wet up there. And I walked up there, and when I got to the top of that hill, the Lord spoke to me, and I'll never forget it. The Holy Spirit said, the thing that you're about to do on this property, the restoration that's about to take place is exactly what you're going to see and manifest in the physical realm is what I'm about to do in the lives of people in this region. People have been neglected and abandoned and bruised and abused and then left. They've been left. They've been left. Nobody cares about them. They've fallen into disrepair and wreck and ruin and they don't even know that there's any kind of love. And he says, you're going to buy this building. You're going to restore this property. And the restoration of that property is going to be something that I do in the physical realm to show and manifest what it is that I'm going to do in the, in the spiritual realm in the lives of people in this region. And so I said, okay, God, I heard, I heard him. So we borrowed the money, raised a bunch of money, and we fought for two years. Well, I don't know how long. We, we had been raising money and trying to get our own building anyways. So we bought the property and we renovated this whole place. It took us a year and a half, mostly volunteer labor, believe it or not. Um, I pulled almost every stitch of wiring in this building. Ran almost every stitch of conduit in this building. I was here many nights by myself till 1 o'clock in the morning demoing stuff so we could get ready. Some of you sitting out here helped. You pulled wire. I didn't know how to do the other stuff, so they had me doing all the electrical because that's what I knew how to do. And we passed it. And I'm not going to get into whatever happened, but we really felt like in November of 2014, God told me, he said, sacrifice your Isaac. And I said, you what? He said, sacrifice your Isaac. I had an offer on the table for a mega ministry to teach in the Bible college and work in the pastoral department. And that sounded really good. And our kids were involved and they were doing productions and all this kind of stuff. And it was fun. And there was a little bit of leadership issues going on here. I'm not going to beat around that bush at all. And I said, I'll sacrifice Isaac. And this was my Isaac. My family had spent 10 years building this, but you didn't see the 20 years prior that I had spent on my knees. I saw you before you ever got here. I dreamed you. I prayed you. I heard your voice. I saw your healing. I saw a manifestation of God's power in this community long before it ever even happened. For years, fought and wrestled. Some of you may understand that, may not. But that's the reality. And I said, okay, God, the end of November 2014, going into 15, before we flipped the year, I said, I will sacrifice Isaac. And you don't know the Abraham Isaac story? I may talk a little bit more about it. Isaac was the son of the promise. He was a manifestation of the promise that God had given Abraham. And God tells Abraham, bring him. Bring Isaac and go sacrifice him. Bring him up the mountain and sacrifice him. Build an altar and kill. Kill your son. Kill your promise. Oh, I know the story. When Abraham lifted up the knife to plunge it in the heart of his son, an angel grabbed his arm and wouldn't allow the knife to drop. So guess what? Guess what I knew? I have faith. It's not always perfect, but I have faith. I believed 100% that when I went to drop the knife and plunge it in the heart of my eyes, that God would stop the plunge. And as I thrust the knife down, God didn't stop it. And I didn't have a rope to turn at the time, and the things led to other things, and we said, okay, bye. By June of 2015, we were living on an island in Florida. <laughs> Never would have dreamt. During that time of living on an island in Florida, I didn't know what was going on here. How honest can I get? I really didn't know what was going on here. You want to know why we didn't know what was going on here? Because I fully expected the leadership of the congregation to stay in contact with me, have me come back and preach once in a while. I never expected that I'd have to put in contact, is this too much? That I'd have to put in contract form to stay in a relationship. Who would, what kind of relationship is it if you've got to sign a contract to stay in a relationship, right? My wife and I leave and all of a sudden, people start 
uh, what do you call unfriend you on Facebook? <laughs> That's when you know it's serious. When you get unfriended on Facebook, I'm telling you, you know. Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Jack me up. He unfriended me. What's up with that? I thought we were in a relationship. And all of a sudden it went silent. And I find out from this little lady right here, they they, they told my whole congregation don't have any contact with Mark and April. I guess that's what happened. I don't know. So we just disappeared into the mountain. Well, I built the thing. Apostolic calling. You may not understand the fivefold ministry out of Ephesians 4, but it doesn't make it untrue, right? So, so we crazy, isn't this? So we move on. We help a church plant down in Florida. That dude died, and that church is shut down now, which breaks my heart. But we help that down in St. Augustine. And I got sick. I got in a wreck. When we were building this building, I got in a wreck. I got hit by a drunk driver over here, shoved three vertebrae into my spine, and busted up my little back. Now I was already degenerating in my back because I had been a water skier and was a little crazy. In my young days, I'm sure you can't imagine that. And so I went into surgeries and all this kind of stuff. Well, I go to Florida, and guess what? I have neuropathy in my feet. My feet, like, don't want to work. My nerves are dead in my feet. And, and, and I get down to Florida, and guess what the heat and humidity does? That I never expected. Is this okay? I might be telling too much. And, and I end up in a wheelchair. I couldn't walk. You take a 40 some year old man who did nothing but build businesses and ministry, jerk that ministry out from under him. He doesn't see God. He's going, Where's my ram? Back to the story of Aaron. Where's my ram, God? Where's my ram? I kept saying, How many years did I say that? Do you go, Where's my ram? I'm waiting for all that knock the ram down. Where's my ram? No, you don't get it unless you've been there. Any of you been there? You said, God, you made me a promise. And now it's gone. Where's my ram? It's right here. It's right here. You gave, you gave Abraham a ram. And instead, I can barely walk from my bed to the bathroom. And if I leave the house, i got to put a stupid wheelchair in the dang trunk of the car. And my kids and my wife have to help me get it out of the trunk and put my blood in it so that we can go to the dollar store. You ever been there? Or maybe something similar? And for two years, I fought. And back in end of summer, summer or end of 18, we felt like I would say, go back and start a church. What? We did, didn't we? Todd? We, uh, oh, we had some contact with some people. Go back and start a church. All right. All right. I'm up on that. But I'm still fighting. Remember, I'm fighting not only for my life, I'm fighting for my feet. Me and will walk. I left a wheelchair laying on that curb when we left. I hired a company to pack the rider truck because I couldn't do it. I promise you, I wheeled that chair out to that curb and I said, I never sit in a wheelchair ever again. And I got in that rider truck and I drove all the way to Indiana. And my feet and legs swelled up to be about as big like a basketball. And my wife was a little concerned for me. But anyways, we kept doctoring. I've had two more surgeries. The shoulder just got rebuilt six weeks ago. I, had, I went to Rush in Chicago a year and a half ago and had the back rebuilt. Low back. <laughs> I'm full of titanium now. But that's okay, you know what? Because I serve a miracle working God, and he's either going to heal my back, or he's just going to let the rods do their thing, or he's going to dissolve them out of there. And you're going to watch me run. Look at this. Yo, I don't have flip flops on. I got, I got leather shoes on. These ain't even vented. Look at me walk around. Is it perfect? No. Am I going to pay a price later? Maybe. <laughs> but who cares, right? Do I have faith for what it is that God has asked me to do? And so, well, here we are. <laughs> Guess what? We're all the manifestation of that faith. Look at this. Well, all, all I wanted to do, you guys have no idea. When this building went up for sale, I predicted it. I heard what was going on over here. And I called the guy that was the president of the corporation at the time, the nonprofit crossroads, is still a corporation. It's not even dissolved yet, which is weird. But I called him up and I said, you don't have to do this. It's going to get shut down, and the property's going to get sold. Some of them run off with the money. That's what's going to happen. Oh, no. Well, guess what? A few years later, here we are. <coughs> God sent the man to come buy this property. 
I didn't know anything about it. All I wanted was to raise the money to buy the property back, to put a church back here. That's all I wanted to do, and I couldn't do it. I'm just completely out of control. I'm like, oh, I just don't have the resources. Don't have the people. We were meeting with some people in our house on and off, maybe one Sunday a month. We had a little breakfast church. There'd be anywhere from four people show up, or me and April by ourselves, or we'd have 30 people. It was weird, man. Weird. It's just weird. My God, what are we doing? And I was going to take three minutes, now I'm taking 13. And, and all of a sudden, I don't know what Reba got involved. <laughs> she met somebody who says, come have a church here. And I'm like, what? This year, April 9, prayed. And we said, God, this year, see, I wasn't healed a few years ago. I man, I met God, I met leadership, I met all y'all. <laughs> I met the community. I didn't like the lot. I've been told, God said, you go to the mine. Mm, you're going to have to swallow me in a fish and spit me back out of the night go over there. For real, for real. Can we be real? So, so we prayed in this year, middle of this year, we, we had given our heart and life, our, our soul, for about three, four months to a ministry that said they wanted us involved. And there's all kinds of promises and nothing came out of that. And I finally said, I'm done. I'm done. I can't keep doing this empty promises. You ever dealt with those kind of people? No, oh, I'm like, no. They won't let me minister. They won't let me do it. I'm going to sit in the back. Anyways, so this summer we said, you know what? We're just going to start having breakfast church in our house every Sunday. And whether it's me and her by ourselves and our kids or whoever shows up, it doesn't matter who comes or doesn't come. Right? We're just going to do Jesus. And that's what we started doing. And then and then Reba got involved. Yeah. <laughs> and something happened with this and met the owner. And the owner is just a wonderful man. Wonderful, wonderful man. Well, as I say, he said, come to church here. And I said, I said, they probably looked at each other and we're like, what, what do you mean? Reba says, he said, come to church here. Right? Well, if I got to meet him, I'm going to go check it out. What even happened in here? And I come walking in that night, two weeks ago, right? We come walking in here that night to meet the owner. We come walking in here. He goes, yeah, all the equipment's left in here. I'm like, what? Oh, all the equipment left in the building. I'm like, what? He says, I told you once. I'm not going to tell you three times. All the equipment's left in the building. He goes, I, it ain't hooked up. I'm not going to work it. It's all dismantled. All the software's gone. We don't know what to do with it. So, Dan is in here today, but i got to give my hat off to Dan and my son Brandon. They come in here two nights, working with the family that are hours in them, and thought, this working. We're not even halfway there yet. This is just little parts and pieces of it, just to be able to turn the lights on. So, so this is, guys, you all, this is blowing my mind. But here's what I'm going to tell you. What April and I had decided this summer when we said we're going to have church every Sunday, we had decided, we said, God... You open the door and we'll go through it. We made a covenant commitment to God. We said, whatever door you open, we'll go through it. Well, guess what he did? <laughs> he opened those doors back there. You know what I said? Those ain't the doors that you're supposed to open. <laughs> what to God? What? What? Well, actually, what I said, I said, what the What? <laughs> That's what I said. So what the what? She'd call me, and I'd be like, what the what? I called my son. I said, this is what's going on. He goes, what the what? <laughs> you know what it was like walking in here for the first time? In ten, nine years, eight years? You know what it was like walking in here today? But do you know what it was like when y'all started walking in here? My God, what are you doing, God? How did this go from nothing to hear me say, Who are you? Pinch me, Sam, until I wake up. What's going on? But here's the thing I can tell you, God is up to something. I may not know what it is, but He's up to something. He's doing something, and I can't say. You say no. I said, we'll make up some Facebook things. We'll call it, hey, it's a new beginning. Whoa, that sounds cute, right? <laughs> Throw it on Facebook. See what happens. Don't show up. And they got nothing to say. That's a lie. <laughs> Where my book was gone. Oh, I lead. I don't like the title. I don't like the cover. But 
Something about this cover. You see these boots? Kind of cover? You see those shoes? You know what those shoes are? Those are the shoes that my wife wore every day for two years, building this right here. I snapped a picture of those boots at the end of that project laying in our garage floor one day, and I said, maybe someday that will come in handy. When I wrote a book, this book is called I Lead. I'm going to change the name and update it. I wrote it a few years ago. But it's called I Lead. It's all about serving in the kingdom. It's all about how do you get God to promote you to the next level? Who here wants to go to the next level? I'm not trying to promote my book. I'm just saying, who wants to go to the next level? We're ready. There's a stack of books back there. I don't know how many I have left. I used to sell them on my website. I shut my website down a couple years ago, and I just quit selling books, and I hid them away in the closet. There's books back there. Y'all can have it. Have a book. Grab a book. Right? If, you, if you're going to read it. If you're not going to read it, then go. Go up over there. Is that good? Who knows Dr. Paul Moore? Dr. Paul Moore. Dr. Paul Moore. Paul, uh, Dr. Paul Moore is on our board. But by the way, we are a 501c3 corporation and nonprofit, and any gift is tax deductible. Okay, we are officially a church, and we did that well, four years ago, three years ago, when we felt like God told us to start a church, and then it didn't work because COVID hit and it failed. Uh, he wrote a book, A Kingdom Come. This is the most powerful kingdom theology and stuff that you can imagine in this book. He called me the other day and he says, this is what God told me. He says, what you have going on over there is he says, I'm ready for you to pipe me in there. And he says, I'm going to teach you on that book. So we're going to start offering kingdom classes, talking about kingdom theology. And this is a pretty powerful book. Anyways, that's going to happen. So that's coming up. So we go from not even having a building, barely fitting in my tiny little living room with a few people. And all of a sudden, we're going to be here every Sunday. Reclaim life. And we're going to reclaim what's, what God's original intent in your life. Yeah. Because a whole lot of you are getting ripped off because you're not experiencing what God's original intent was for you. And we're missing it. Why are we missing it? Well, we're going to find out all about that, all right? What time is it? I was hoping to have a... 11.30. 11.30. All right, got a couple minutes. So, can I, can I ask you this? Whatever happened, all hearts clear? Well, I live south of Elbo. I don't live in the mine. I live south of Elbo. But well, we are south of Melville, but it's 20 miles. This could be a little bit of a drive. So those of you that are local here, we need you. You know, those who are from out of town, I get it because I am now too. <laughs> um, yeah, I want you to turn in your Bibles if you grow up. Otherwise, get on your iPad or your phone or whatever it is because this is one thing you know for me. A lot of people say, you know what, we're not into the lights and the smoke and the action and too loud and you shouldn't dance in church and all this other stuff. Well, guess what? I'm a Bible guy, man. I love the Bible. I think the Bible has, has uh, I think the Bible is a guide for life, man. It's, it's our everything. It's, it's our substance. It reveals to us. It's not God, but it reveals to us God. And here's the problem. Too many people get caught up in the Bible and they start memorizing scripture verses and they start reading the Old Testament and they start getting caught up in the commandments and all of a sudden they become so religious that they have no relationship. So they maybe know a little bit about God, but they don't know God. This thing is supposed to lead you to God. So if you're ready, hang out with me because I will show you how to build a relationship with God rather than just be somebody who memorizes your Bible and turns into a, a rigid, frozen icicle that sits in the pew every Sunday. I will challenge you and kick your tail. If you want me to be your pastor, I'll be your pastor. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to challenge the daylights out of you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to pull you. I'm going to tell you all about God, his principles. I'm going to ask you, what you learned this week? What did God speak to you? What's God doing in your life and your heart? Here's the thing. This is all about getting to know God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Don't come here and sit in a pew for 10 years, 20 years, and you ain't changed one bit over the course of that time. I am not looking for people to hang out with me who are going to stay the same way today. Or the way they are today, that they're going to be the same way 10 years from now. You are not who I want to hang out with. You want to do that? There's 20 churches in this community. Go sit a pew. This is not me. This is not a pew sitting ministry. If I'm going to pastor people, y'all are going to be a family and an army. And y'all are going to watch this. Y'all are going to love. <laughs> So if we're going to talk about a new beginning, it starts right here. It starts with a heart. I couldn't pastor y'all four years ago. You want to know why? Because my heart was hurt. 
Now I'm not, it, 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 it doesn't mean that things don't matter and I don't feel, but here's the thing. Whatever God wants. If God wants to put me in his building and hand a microphone, who am I to tell God no? See, and some of you have been telling God no in some areas of your life. You don't like what it is he's telling you. And so you say, no. Who are you? You know better than God? Don't hand me a microphone. This is what happens. <laughs> I'm really not like this at all. I'm really not. What? <laughs> Turn in your Bibles to Romans 5. We're going to at least, at least talk a little bit of scripture today while we're here. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Offense will skew your vision. I got offended. What? You're a pastor. Yeah, I've even ordained and got a Bible college degree. But I got offended. And you know what that offense does? Excuse your vision for the thing that God wants to do in your life. If you're offended, you'll never walk in what it is that God wants to give you. You'll never walk in realities and the promise of God. Stop being offended at the things that are happening in your life. Stop being offended at the people that hurt you. Stop being offended about the people that abused you or spoke ill of you. Watch well, this. What does Jesus say about those people? Hmm. That is the hardest thing, isn't it? What does he say? Was that you, Gab? These bright lights, and I thought that was your voice. What does he say to do? Forgive them. I love who? Even my enemies. Anybody here got enemies? Anybody, anybody here got people who don't like you? <laughs> Gee, that buddy. Love them. Oh, my. But it starts with a new heart. You can't love them if you don't have a new heart. So here's where I want to go. This, this, this is going to take a couple minutes, but Romans 5. Um, hope some of you are here. We're going to make this a two part series. Wow, this is about a four-part series. It's going to turn into about an eight-part series. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I am changed, have I? Therefore, you know, I don't like preaching starting with a therefore. You know why? Because if you preach starting with a therefore, you got to know what the there is for there. Therefore. What the therefore is there for. There you go. Yeah, exactly. What a what? And I don't want to go to what the what. I don't want to go there right now. So since we have been justified through faith, how have we been justified? Y'all, no, no, if you want to go on this journey, you got to go along. Oh, I going back home. <laughs> oh, it was nice having church at home. Little kitties would run, we'd have coffee, we'd, we'd have muffins. It was amazing. That too. <laughs> Make an explosion, Bill. <laughs> He's like my dealer. We'll have bacon. We'll get him to make some bacon. We'll be one of the here. Since we and then you'll be addicted to first piece is free. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Courtney makes it. Oh, Courtney. And they're Courtney. Bill Cooks. Bill Cooks and Courtney puts it together. Sorry, they're a team. That's right. Can I hear him, man? Amen. You're a team. You got a spouse? Do you have a spouse? Yeah. Those of you that are married? Say, I, I, it's a team. It's a team. Y'all are weak today. Don't just give up. You're not used to going to church, are you? We've been justified through faith. How have you been justified? Are you justified? Man, I'm hoping I'm building with a bunch of justified people. We'll go there in a minute. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who do we have peace with God through? Is it because of you? Is it because you went to church? Why do you have peace with God? Jesus. Through what? Jesus. Why? Why? Why do I have peace with God through Jesus, through Christ? Why? Hmm? Because he's Christ. Saying, oh, you're right. What did he do? He left us peace. He what? He left us peace. He left us peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Well, what did he do? 
He died. But what did he send in there? The, the prophet went out in the valley. The valley was filled with dry bones. God told the prophet to speak. Speak. Dry bones live. What did Jesus do? <sighs> he was buried. He took and accomplished everything that you and I never could. Bore it on himself. Died. Was buried like a seed in the ground. I'm going somewhere. This buried like a seed in the ground. A seed can't live until it dies. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a horticulturist, and I don't have a green thumb, but I've heard that somewhere. The seed has to die to live. Jesus died. He was buried in the tomb, and he rose. Watch this. This was alive, and then it was dead, and I was about to rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that don't give you Holy Ghost goosebumps. Through him we gain access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. Wait a minute. Is this all right? No, all right. Let's go. <coughs> we have peace with God through Jesus, right? Through whom we've gained access by faith. How have you gained access? By faith, by faith again. There it is again. Watch it. Into this grace in which we now stand. You now stand in grace. I want that to soak in a minute. You don't stand because of your merit. You don't stand because of anything you've done. I don't stand up here because of anything I've done. I stand up here. You want to know why? Because of faith. Mm -hmm. In grace. You, this, this is so good. This is seriously. We now stand in grace and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, character hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who's been given to us. Who here has the Holy Spirit? My God, you got to let him loose. Some of you need to take him off the leash. Am I, am I, Erica, am I doing okay? Right. All right, I'm just making sure, because it's not coming out the way that I wanted it to. Because you see, verse 6, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. You're ungodly. Right. So are you, 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 so are you. Brother, how is the sinner saying my grace? How many times have you heard that going to church? I'm just a sinner. You're just a sinner saved by grace. Well, I ain't going to be today. But over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to teach you about this grace. And we're going to find out if we're really a sinner saved by grace. Or what God has truly done in you, in your life, producing in you a new nature. You're not just a sinner. If you're in Christ, you're no longer a sinner saved by grace. You're now empowered. Christ in a new nature, walking around with a brand new nature. Guess what? He doesn't even see the sins that you think he sees, and he's holding you back because you've got something in your past. He doesn't even remember you got them in your past. Those things in your past aren't holding you back any more than you allow them to hold you back in your head. Your mind, your belief system about you is the thing that holds you back. The things that are in your past that affect you today shouldn't even affect you anymore if you're in Christ. So I dare to say that some of you think you're in Christ, but you ain't walking in Christ. You're walking in religion, and you're doing your little chop-chop, and your shuffle, and you're turning your Christian music on, and... But things in your life got you burned. And you go, oh, I'm just a sinner, saved by grace. I'm taking you somewhere. It's all right. Christ produced in you a brand new nature. Watch it. I'm going to prove it to you. What time is it? Next week? <laughs> I'm running out of time. Watch this. 
Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. Right? Makes sense? But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we've now been justified by his blood. Do you know what justified means? Justified means, it's remember it this way, just as you've never sinned. So if you're justified, it's just as you've never sinned. Say, I'm justified. Just as if I've never sinned. I want you to understand something. God erases everything of who you were to make you now who he wants you to be. You want to reclaim his original intent for your life? Walk in justification and understand who you are. I am justified. Just as if. What? Come on, you can help me preach, man. I don't preach by myself. Just as what? Say, I'm justified. Just as if. I never sinned. Now, if y'all really got this, you'd be climbing the walls right now. I'm just saying. Because he doesn't see you the way that you see you. He sees you completely different. And I'm going to take you on a journey in the next few weeks and show you how he sees you. How's that sound? Remember, we talked a little bit about this. We go, folks, what scripture are you going? Where are you going? Like, I don't know, maybe Romans 6. And then you're maybe Romans 5. I want to talk about Abraham and Sarah. I don't have time. We're going to have to pick up here. Let me finish at least the verse of 11. All right? <laughs> we've been just, since now we've been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? When you don't understand justification, you live up to the low level of your self worth. The way you see yourself is what you, you rise up to the point where you see yourself and you live up to your low level of self worth. God has called you to come up. He says, and I've justified you just as if you've never sinned. So I can position you where you were originally supposed to be positioned. But sin has tainted you, separated you from me. So now I make you justified just as if you never sinned to position you where you were in the first place. So I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many times you've blown it. I'm going to tell you something. It's time to come to Christ. And here's the thing about coming to Christ. A whole lot of preachers and a whole lot of teachers, a whole lot of churches want to have you make a decision and pray a prayer. <laughs> every head bowed, every eye closed, with no looking around. If you want to accept Jesus Christ and make a decision for him today, this day, you lift up your hand. You lift up your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Four people came to know Jesus this week. You say, you're mocking. Okay, I'm teasing a little bit. I am. Because here's the thing. In the American church, Western civilization, we've tried to get people to come to Jesus by having them pray a prayer and say, you need to believe, you need to make a decision for Jesus. And there's a whole lot of people who've made a decision for Jesus. They've raised their hand. They've prayed a sinner of prayer. They walk out that door and they haven't been changed. And they're not justified. They're not a creature in Christ Jesus. And yet some of them sit in pews week after week, year after year, and they're unchanged. And they think they're okay because they think they're a Christian because they pray a prayer. I told you, hang out with me, we're going to go somewhere. Or only two of you are going to show up next week. <laughs> One of the two. Oh, he's too hard. He's too hard on me. No, I'm not being hard on you at all. I want you to learn who you are in Christ. Because when you discover and truly understand who you are, you'll quit living at this level and having all these little things bother you and you'll start soaring at the level that God wants you to go. Why? Because he sees you completely and we see ourselves. Do you know I've, I've counseled people and talked to people who couldn't look at themselves in the mirror? They didn't like themselves so bad. They hated themselves so badly that they couldn't look at themselves in the mirror. I don't like to look at myself in the mirror because I'm ugly. So I make a profession every day when I get a shower. This is what I say. So hopefully it comes true one day. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be hard. 
Make it perfect in every way. No, I gotta get to the third part. I can't wait to look in the mirror. Cause I get better looking each day. Right, Ryan? I just saw you too. You get like that. Me too, brother. Me too. It ain't working. Thank God. God justified me through him. Oh. We were still God's enemies. We were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more have we been reconciled? Shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through him who we now receive reconciliation. Here's the thing. I'm taking you. Starting next week, we're going to talk about Abraham and Sarah. And I'm going to show you what God says about Abraham and Sarah. And what Abraham and Sarah did. And then we're going to look at what God says about Abraham and Sarah. And then I'm going to show you what Abraham and Sarah did. And I'm going to show you what God says about Abraham and Sarah. Are you understanding this so far? Such a tough crowd. <laughs> you come in here. I haven't seen some of you in years. And then you tease me. Make faces. Can I tell you, yeah, I love you. I love you. It's so good to see some of you guys, my gosh. Some of you not, but others so good. <laughs> I'm teasing. It's great to see all of you. You know you came for a show, right? <clears throat> all hearts clear? All hearts clear? Are you justified? See, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand and make a decision today. But I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to challenge you with this. It's time to change your beliefs. It's time. You have put it off long enough. It's time to just not make a decision for Christ and raise my hand and pray a sentence prayer. But it's time to say, put your foot down. And say, enough is enough. I'm going to live for Christ. Man. I'm sick and tired of this junk that's inside my head, inside my heart, inside my past, in my memories, holding me back and telling me what I am. And telling me what I should be. When Christ has justified me and removed all that junk from me just as if what? I never sinned. Who wants to live that kind of life? I don't know about you, but that's what I need. Because if I keep going back to what Mark thinks, in your feet if you would. I'm going to ask for a song to be played. Fear is not my future. And I don't know what time it is, but this song is what? Eight minutes long? I'm going to dismiss is what I'm going to do. And then this song is going to come on. If you want prayer, I'm sweaty and stinky. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for every last person you want to pray for. I'm going to pray for you. Rebo will pray for you. And April and whoever else, we're going to pray. We're going to... Oh, man, welcome home. Oh, my family. Can I say thank you for being my family? I didn't expect this. I told, I told my label, I said, I'm going here. I said, I don't, I don't know why. How many people are going to show up? I don't know if this is worth the money, and we got to pay for this. Not if it's worth the money and all the work. We set up chairs, got to tear it down, put it back the way it was. We've got, we got, we got, we got gifts for everybody. Oh, there's gifts for everybody back there. If you want one, take one. I love you. There's some reclaimed sweatshirts back there. There's not enough for everybody, but just take it. If you find one your size, take it. Just don't take two. Take one. I didn't take an offering. We need an offering. All day. When we found out about this, we had like a couple hundred dollars in the bank. And we got insurance, and we got subscriptions, and we got all this stuff going on, and we bought all food, and we needed to buy some equipment. And, but anyway, so I went to the little team that we had in my house, and I said, hey, man, we need, we need to raise like 1,200 bucks to make this happen by the end of the month. We raised about 900. 
So we're really close. We're three hundred dollars shy from our goal for January. Well, now we have a new goal for February. Because remember, we had to write a check to come in here. You, you know, it's cool we get to come in here, but I just want y'all to realize we had to write a check. Make that happen. And so we took money out of our own pocket and made that happen. So I just want to encourage you. Here's the cool thing about God. I'm not going to stand up here and give you a, a tithing sermon. I'm just going to say, if everybody does a little bit, and if we all just do what's in our heart, what God brings in your heart, it doesn't have to be a big sacrifice for anyone. It's just a little bit. And here's what's really cool. We use planning center for our service work and stuff. And so they also have a text to give thing. So you can text any amount to eight, bigger the better, but any amount to 84321. When you type in 84321 and you hit enter, you will see a list of churches come up. Make sure you click on our logo, okay? See the logo, Sam? Come here. Everybody see the logo? It's, it's right here on Sam's sweatshirt. See that? See that logo? That's the logo you click on, y'all, all right? That's what you like. And we'll be sure to get that. Now, if you use a credit card, we pay 3%. If you do an ACH, which is you connect it to your, your checking account, but we don't pay anything. It's free. So just so you all know that. You can also click the online button online, or you can give cash or checks today. I mean, is there a bucket around here? Y'all, yeah, no, we didn't even talk about offerings. Is there a bucket somewhere? Uh, the little brown one somewhere. There's a little brown bucket somewhere. They're going to put it in the back on the corner of the sound booth. Aaron, is that cool? Put it on the corner of the sound booth. And y'all can just give on your way out. You can either text or you can drop a little bit in there. And I promise you, the money's not being used frivolously or going to salaries or anything like that. We're just trying to pay to be able to come to the building and use it. So, um, and just give what God lays on your heart to give. I'm not going to say any more than that. But I was going somewhere and I don't remember where yeah. I was going. Yeah. But I see that little brown basket. That's it, right? There. Yeah. Checks can be made out to reclaim life. Um, <laughs> this is Mark Allen Ministries Incorporated, EBA, Refine Life Church. It's, it's either the Refine Life Church, I just thought maybe we looked it up or, or whatever. And, and all your gifts are tax to Um And uh, I don't know what else I was going to say. Oh, this. This, 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 this. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? It's time. And I'm not asking you to raise your hand and make a decision at all. What I'm asking you is leave here. You know, and think about living for Jesus. Think about living for Jesus. You know what repent means? What does repent mean? Preacher stands up and repent! Is that repentance? No. What's repent? People think that's repentance. Change your mind. Super simple. Change your mind. You're going one way. My mind says I'm walking toward Ryan. Well, I want to walk towards it. Well, I want to walk towards you. I just repented. See, this is, it's the same with Bible repentance. Change your mind. And as we change our mind, we begin to renew our mind. He talks about that in Romans. Anyway, man, I love y'all so much. Will you receive a blessing today? Father, I thank you for what you deposited in each and every one of us, even though I only got through the introduction. I pray that it's been a seed that's sown. And that as we leave this place, no one would leave unchanged. Father, anybody who needs prayer or love or anything else, Father, I pray they stick around for a couple minutes and they receive everything that they need before they walk out that door. Father, I pray, you, you, you're the healer. And so today, with no fanfare, nothing fancy, not even music playing right now, I just ask you to heal. Heal in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to heal brains, <laughs> heal minds, heal bodies, heal spirits, Father, right now, I ask you to heal us in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask for a supernatural revelation this week. That we have a newness of who you are, and a new understanding of who you are, and justification. Father, I pray that we lay our head on the pillow tonight and we think justified. What is justified? God, I'm justified. I want that word to sink into your brain and your heart. Where it goes through your brain and hits your heart this week. Or all of a sudden, you get the revenue, you'd be like taking a shower. And all of a sudden you get a revelation. I'm justified. He doesn't see me as what? I know it sounds impossible, doesn't it? But it's not impossible for him. So, Father, I thank you. It's not impossible. It's not impossible for you. It's what you do. It's, it's, it's what you've done for us. And it's already there. It's just we just gotta grab a hold of it. So we repent, we change our mind, we believe in you, and we grab a hold of it, and we move forward. No longer will we 
reject suffering and circumstances. We haven't come to Jesus just for the benefit of going to heaven. Jesus, you never asked us to accept you so we can go to heaven. Eternal life starts now. Kingdom life starts now. It's so that we can live now. Yes, eternity is a great benefit, but that's not why we came to you. We came to you because you want to renew the original intent you had for me. And though Adam, Adam fell, Christ showed up. And he's raised me up into newness. Say, he's raised me into newness. My thoughts this week will be new. Will they be focused on you, God? New thoughts and justify. Just as if. What's the last part? Never sin. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Love somebody before you leave. If you want to stick around for a while, worship is cool. It's what we're going to do. We're firing the band back up. Hey, they work hard. And this is an incredible song. You can make this your prayer tonight. To, today. I hope it's not tonight, but I kept you way too long. On your way out, grab a snack. If there's food left, I'm sure there is. Grab a gift on the back table. You can go on our website if you want to give information. You can fill out a card. You can fill out a card so we can pray with you. We pray over every prayer request that comes in. We celebrate every praise report that comes in. You can do it online or on those cards. I don't care. Here's the thing. Get in the family. Are you in the family? Yes. Then get in the family. Because we're here. Guess what we're going to be next Sunday? We're here. You need something through the week? Reach out. My name, my name, number, messenger, nothing's hidden. I get lots of messages. If I miss yours, do it again. Right? Reba too. If you message Reba, no. You're going to have to send it eight times before she responds to you. She has 432 notifications on her phone. So when she gets another one, she never sees it. Is that not true? Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't. You're justified. I did call to call you out, didn't I? <laughs> Love y'all. If you want prayer, we're here to pray with you. Does anybody have anointing oil? I forgot that. I have anointing oil. I have anointing oil. I'll look at you and do it. See if you need prayer or you want anointing oil. You know what the Bible says in James? If you're sick, guess what you do? Call the elders, ask them to anoint you, Lord. And the prayer of faith will make you what? Well. So, you believe in all that. What happens if God doesn't heal you? And you walk out the door. Doesn't matter, he's still God, right? I have faith, so have some faith. Have a faith filled week. I love you all. If you need anything, holler. If not, get out of here. <laughs> if you want to stick around after we're done worshiping, we got to pick up chairs too. You can do that also. Uh oh, you got anything, baby? Does anybody, all hearts clear? Anybody need to share anything? Aaron, he hit it, man. <laughs> well, that's a delayed reaction.